Hello students. So today we will see a very important concept of geomorphology and that is W. M. Davis's cycle of erosion. This also goes by these names that is geomorphic cycle or geographic cycle. So Davis, William Morris Davis, he was influenced by Darwin's on the origin of species by means of natural selection. So if you have an idea of this Darwin's origin of species, so that was uh, basically upon the evolution of living species. So his theme, his theory was based on the theme of change or evolution of living species over time. So in this theory, which was set for, for, uh, forth by Davis between 1884 to 1934, he said that landforms, he assumed landform that they would change through time from youth, then would be maturity to old age. So there was specific stage. So he gave landform specific certain characteristics which are related to youth, maturity and old stage. His theory was first published in 1889 entitled as Theory of Cycle of Erosion, which was followed by another theory which was followed by another theory that is geographical cycle in 1899. So he had some basic assumptions. Davis had some, these were, had six basic assumptions for his cycle theory. What were the assumptions? First one is homogeneous lithology. So that means the lithology of the whole area, it must be homogeneous. That means there must be similarity in the lithological aspect. Second is rapid uplift, rapid uplift and no erosion during uplift. According to him, there should be rapid uplift of the land and this uplift should occur in a very short time. And during that time, erosion process does not take place during the process of uplift. The third is commencement of erosion after upliftment ends. So according to Davis, erosion will start only after the upliftment will end. That means according to him, erosion and upliftment, these two things doesn't go hand in hand. Next, he said about long crustal stability. Now he presumed that the crust would be stable for a long period of time. Why? According to him, so that during that long crustal stability, the erosion process could complete its sequential stage. That is from youth, maturity to old. So during that time, the crust should be stable. Area should be humid tropics. For his cycle of erosion to function, the area must be, must have some fluvial characteristics. That is, there must be many rivers must cover the whole land. Because that river, those rivers will act as the major exogenetic forces in his process of cycle of erosion. Landforms are the products of interactions of endogenetic and exogenetic forces. Now, landforms, according to Davis, is the result of the endogenetic forces, means the diastrophic forces, and these endogenetic forces, they occur within the earth's surface, and the external forces or exogenetic forces they occur above the earth's surface, like the various denudational forces or agents of erosion, like groundwater, sea waves, glaciers, periglacial, etc. Now, according to him, geo geographical cycle is a period of time during which an uplifted landmass, this is very important, uplifted landmass undergoes its transformation by the process of land sculpture, ending into what is the end result? Low featureless plain called Pinny Plain or penny plane. Now he had some, there were some fundamental concepts. What are the fundamental concepts? You can see that this is the youth followed by maturity, followed by old age. Now according to him, landscapes, they will undergo changes. As you are seeing, landscape is undergoing changes. And at the same time, relief is being reduced. See the relief over here. The relief over here, it is being reduced and the relief over here, it is being obviously reduced. And why this relief reduction? Because of erosion. 
what is the main force of erosion over here riverine action that is why fluvial landform uh, fluvial feature forms a fundamental aspect of daily cycle of erosion now landscape can be arranged in an evolutionary sequence and that is illustrative of cyclic changes that means landscape will go through an orderly or a cyclic sequence as you are seeing over here and the changes are systematic it is not that from youth it will directly jump to old age so the changes are systematic so you see over here the youth will have a set of landscape features as as is given over here similarly maturity will have their own set of features and so on goes for the old stage and see how the uh, there is the reduction in the relief so erosion leads to the degradation of this uplifted landmass into finally this featureless plain and this plain is called pinny plain so in the youth over here there are certain things that you must uh, know before i move on to the next slide there is a there is this thing called absolute relief and relative relief so what is absolute relief and relative relief now absolute relief means the highest relief over here as you are see this is the highest relief and as you are seeing in elsewhere that the highest relief is highest only in the youth stage because in all these places there is a subsequent reduction in the relief you are seeing over here there is subsequent reduction in relief over here obviously the relief has uh, re reduced into a gentle undulating plain caused by the river valleys now th this in the youth the relief is the highest and this highest relief is called the absolute relief so absolute relief term means the highest relief then we will see another term which is called relative relief you will see the subsequent slides so what is relative relief relative relief means the difference between the highest relief and the lowest relief now towards the uh, end of this youth stage just before this maturity because of the down cutting because vertical erosion is most in the youth stage because of the down cutting obviously the valley floors will also be reduced the river valley uh, floors will also be reduced just like over here see this this is the highest relief and where the uh, river is flowing so wherever river is flowing river will cut deep deep into the valley that will result into what valley deepening so there are two reliefs over here one is the absolute relief or the highest relief and the other relief is this river valley through which the river flows and obviously because of vertical erosion the valley through it it flows will be subsequently of lesser height so the difference between this highest relief and the lowest relief in that particular area the lowest relief is representative of what the river valleys caused by what because of deep uh, vertical erosion or valley deepening so the difference between the highest point of that area and the lowest point of that area is known as relative relief and in the youth stage we find both to be very high both the absolute and also the relative relief we will see the reasons in subsequent uh, slides now this is also known as normal cycle of erosion and fluvial cycle of erosion so why fluvial as has been said before because fluvial action is widespread over the earth's surface in all the areas excepting that of cold and hot deserts so since basically everywhere we have fluvial act uh, action so this cycle of erosion is also called normal cycle of erosion or the fluvial cycle of erosion now the trio of davis this is called the trio of davis structure process stage so these three factors so landform is the result of the factor of what structure process and stage so these three plays an important role in the origin and development of landforms in any particular area so first let us see about the structure what do we mean by the structure structure means the structure of the land uh, landmass 
uh, is what that means the lithological aspect what is the rock type what is the terrain is the terrain made up of hard rock or soft rock because if it is made of hard rock then obviously the erosion process and the various uh, uh, ero erosion the uh, the process of erosion will be slow but if it is soft rock then the process of erosion will be faster whether there is folding faulting joints etc because on these also depends the intensity of the erosion process so that is why structure plays a very important role for davis uh, cycle of erosion next is the process the process means uh, uh, it refers to the geomorphic process what are the various geomorphic process which again means the geomorphic agents geomorphic agents which results into weathering of mass movement etc like the various uh, winds glaciers waves etc these are the major geomorphic agents so flowing water is also the uh, major agent for davis cycle of erosion then comes the stage now davis model is based on the evolution of landform over time as you have been seeing in the preceding slides now and that stage there there are three stages which is youth maturity and old stage now his cycle of erosion it was it is based on hutton's cyclic nature of earth's history and hutton's uniformitarianism concept and davis and darwin's evolutionary concept so he referred to the whole sequence of the cycle of erosion which has been divided into youth maturity and uh, old stage now there are certain underlying principles of this cycle first is base level of erosion so it is the level below which streams cannot erode their valley flows so that is the last uh, level till which erosion can occur extension of sea level beneath the continents that is the extension of the of the oceanic crust with, below the continental crust then a critical minimum gradient below which a stream cannot be reduced this is again similar to this slope gently is upwards away from the coast as we can easily see that as we move away from the coast the land is gets elevating davis supplemented the idea of the base level with the concept of grade now what is grade that is the balance between erosion and deposition and what is gradation gradation means aggradation that is deposition minus degradation that is removal so deposition of the various uh, landform features or deposition of the eroded materials minus degradation that is removal that is erosion results into gradation the concept of gradation now hover this is the cycle in very gist over here and then uplifted land mass will be eroded in the youth it will go to maturity old and again it uh, will be uplifted so this is the stages of erosion now another concept that you must know is the divide what is a drainage divide so this is a very important concept so this is the divide you can see over here this is an elevated landform so this is the elevated boundary which sort of separates two areas these are the two areas this is drainage basin of stream a and drainage basin of stream b so this elevated boundary is separating two areas that are being drained by different river system this is drained by stream a this is drained by stream b so this particular elevated Uh, region is separating these two now you can also subdivide this divide so over here this is another divide which is sort of separating this particular stream system sub stream system and this stream system so in short this is the elevated land whatever elevated land which separates two different stream systems so at the start of the of the cycle this is quite high but towards the uh, end of the cycle these also gets divided these divides also get divided then only it comes to the old age we will see how so this is the graphical representation so over here this adg this this particular line this is the base line which we were saying that river cannot erode below this so this is the base line adg and 
this B E G, this this line, this line over here, B E G, this line over here, this is the valley floor. So understand the difference. This is the baseline and this is the valley floor. Why valley floor? Because this vertical places over here, the rivers are flowing. The rivers are flowing. That is why valley deepening has occurred. Because valley deepening has occurred, that is why what is happening? Here you see uh, the valley flows are over here. So these are the valley flows. So since this is the place of the lowest relief in that particular stage. So this is the valley floor. So this, this over here is the valley floor. Now this is the valley floor. Now actually the relief is something like this. Over here, then it comes to here. Then it comes to here, then, it, then it, this is a valley floor. So that means over here upliftment has occurred. According to Davis, when there is upliftment, there is no erosion. So you can't, you are not seeing any kind of valley deepening till over here. Till here, from here to here, you are not seeing any sort of valley deepening or any sort of erosion. According to Davis, assumptions. Now, over here, once the youth has started, these are the divides which I have been, uh, which I told you before. These are the divides. These are the divides. So as this is the stream system, these are the stream system. So because of stream system, just like over here you are seeing, you can easily understand through this 3D diagram, the uh, height of this place and the height of this place, obviously the height has reduced. So the height has reduced over here. So we see valley deepening over here. And another thing you are seeing, the gap between A and B, this A base level and B, the gap between A and B, slowly you can see that this decreases as the cycle moves on, it decreases. Now I have told you about absolute height. Now check these points. Absolute height remains constant because of insignificant lateral erosion. We don't have any lateral erosion or not significant lateral erosion in youth stage. So that is why, because there is no lateral erosion, means that is why this divides cannot be eroded. Because divides cannot be eroded, that is why upper the absolute height, the upper limit remains constant. So that is why here in the youth stage, the absolute height is the maximum. You see this height, You here you are seeing the height has decreased, more decreased. So the maximum absolute height, that is A, AC, this maximum absolute height is the maximum where it is maximum in the youth stage. And then uh, what happens, the upper curve, this is the upper curve. The upper curve represents what? It represents the summits of the water divides or the altitudes of the highest divide summits. And this BC, AC is the absolute height and BC is the initial average height and this point to this point becomes then, now if we, if we take this, this particular area, this particular area to this particular area becomes the relative relief. So I hope you have understood what is absolute height, that is the highest height of uh, in a particular stage. So the absolute height is the highest, as you can easily see, highest in the U stage. Relative relief is the difference between the highest and the lowest. So the, then the relative relief also starts to increase in this particular um, in this particular stage. And the lower curve, that is the LC, you can see that this falls rapidly. Why this falls rapidly? Because with more valley deepening, the more it deepens, the more it comes down. So over here, valley deepening is still here. So LC is over here. We are seeing over here, there is more valley deepening. So LC is, uh, is falling rapidly because of more valley deepening. The more it will deepen because of vertical erosion, the more the LC, the valley floors will reduce. Now the, in the second stage, the summits over here, you are seeing that the summits were over here and this UC curve is falling. That means the summits are being eroded. Because the summits are eroded, that is why you are seeing that there is a marked fall in this upper curve. Why is the summits getting eroded? 
because as more and more uh, streams are getting joined from these places and as more there is lateral erosion because of lateral erosion by the streams these places the summits are getting eroded now the um, because of lateral erosion what is happening over here there is valley broadening now, because of lateral erosion what is happening there is valley broadening so from v shape what you are seeing over here u shape because there is lateral erosion there is lateral erosion there is no lateral erosion over here because there is lateral erosion so the valley slopes are getting eroded and with the valley slopes being getting eroded the valley becomes u shaped and at the same time the summits are getting reduced because of joining of the various streams from here and also because of lateral erosion ultimately in the third step what happens that this upper curve you see how it falls very rapidly so because there is rapid rate of decrease in the absolute relief so the absolute relief decreases because of the divides getting uh, eroded and obviously the relative relief will also get reduced because when the absolute relief uh, reduces the relative relief will also reduce and secondly the relative relief uh, reduces not only because of absolute relief reduction but also valley deepening has ceased and there is lateral erosion so since it cannot go deep down because this is the base level and it cannot go deep beyond the base level so there is this um, stage till when it will be valley deepened after that there won't be any deepening so there is no uh, this uh, relative relief also it reduces and ultimately we see some relict of some mountains or resistant remnants etc which are known as monad knocks and a flat featureless plain is produced now what are the characteristics of a youthful landscape i hope most of you know about this because these are the same characteristics that we see in the river first uh, first stage of a river so what do we see over here we see few consequent streams with very large tributaries headward erosion is seen by the very small tributaries we don't see very large tributaries in a, in the first stage development of v shaped valleys and we don't have flood plains over here because flood plains are the characteristics of the third stage the interstream tracks between the stream or these are also called the interfluves they are wide and poorly drained we find lots of waterfalls and rapids over here because rapids and waterfalls are associated with the first stage of the river or the youthful stage of the river or the mountainous stage of the river because we generally see all the waterfalls and rapids in the first stage as the water as the river see as the river will fall down these are the nick points because uh, these are the nick points since there is a change in the height when there is a change abrupt change in the height then the water will fall down this change in height is because of the uh, hard rock and the soft rock features so see these rivers when these rivers have to come down how it will come down since over here there it finds finds a sort of barricade so it will fall down and this falling down is known as waterfalls and rapids based upon the intensity now overall valleys form is gorge or canyon you can easily see from this uh, picture over here stream meandering does not exist much but it may exist on flat land wherever it finds flat land it can meander and we find maximum altitude over here and uh, the potential maximum potential of energy next we find the characteristics of the uh, the middle stage or the maturity stage as you have seen over here that there is a lot of meandering here now in the maturity stage what we will see the valley extend we have a well integrated drainage system that is we have got a lot of consequent streams subsequent streams etc a well integrated drainage system and the stream by now has adjusted to the lithology and the structure now uh, you are seeing over here wide flood plains and also the meanders and the v shape becomes u shape and such u shaped valleys are found in ladakh so we can say that ladakh is in the second phase of the cycle of erosion what are the characteristics of old uh, landscape or the old stage now in an old uh, stage since over here all the tributaries or most of them have merged with the main uh, stream 
So we find over here a single wide river. Take the example of Ganga, which is also known as Hukli in West Bengal. So it is a very wide, it has got a very wide flat plain. And the tributaries, they are less than in maturity, but they are, uh, we find it more than what is there in youth. We have Oxbow lakes, etc. So these are the characteristics which, what we generally have in the old stage of a river. And as said earlier, the stream divides will reduce in heights and uh, there will be gentle sloping. The slopes will be gently sloping because of lateral erosion. Now the word Monadnock has come from Mount Monadnock in New Hampshire. And what are they? Like you have seen before, they are convex or concave features or the relics of old uh, mountains or old uh, uh, lands which have not yet been uh, removed. So these are the relics or the old residual hills. So such a, such a kind of a featureless plain with some old relics are called, um, uh, they are called the Pini Plain. The ultimate result is the Pini Plain with such residual hills called the Monadnocks. Now Indian Peninsula is an example of the old stage of the cycle of erosion. Now over here, you see how the relief is reducing. So these are the water divides. And over, you can easily see, now this is another water divide. You can see that as they are coming down, as they are coming down, the vertical uh, downwesting is occurring. And over here, you see the width has increased. The width has increased. Now as the width has increased because of lateral erosion, and also there is a transfer of sediments. See here the width has more increased. There is a meandering. And ultimately the meanders, they fall into the mouth of the, of the river, into the sea. And the various sediments are deposited over here. So you see over here, this the height has been reduced because of lateral erosion. And over here the divides have been completely, almost completely, it has gone into a flat featureless plain. You can't say this is a flat featureless plain, but this is almost a flat plain. There can be interruptions in the cycle of erosion through dynamic rejuvenation. This is caused by epigenic uplift of a landmass. Now, when there is an uplift of landmass, what will happen? This will, when the landmass gets uplifted, so there will, this will result into the stream gradients being steepened. Because over here, see over here, now supposing this landmass out here in the last stage, this suddenly increases its height. There is an uplift. So it gets uplifted sort of. So if it gets uplifted already, this has gone into the base level. This river has gone into the base level. Now sudden, and you are seeing over here, the valley gradient. But suddenly there is a change in the, in the, in the, there is a uplift of the landmass. Then obviously there will be a change in the steepness. So that is why it is said that the steepening of the stream gradients, eustatic rejuvenation, this is called by the sea lowering, uh, sea level lowering. See, with the sea level low, uh, lowering, it will lead to rejuvenation of stream at its mouth and resulting to interruptive profile. Now, if there is a lowering of the sea, the sea gets lowered so that now the river, it cannot meander so easily into the sea because the sea level falls. When the sea level will fall, that means what will happen? The continental shelf area over here, that will rise. Sea level fall means continental shelf area will rise. Now, when the continental shelf area will rise, now that means this area, this continental, suppose in this entire area, there is a fall in the, in the sea level. So this continental shelf area will now rise. So now this will, continental shelf area will be now a part of the land. That means the river will have to erode while it was falling into the sea. Now it has to erode this part also. That is why it is said that it is an interrupted profile. And then we have the static rejuvenation when there is an increase in runoff because of increased rainfall or increase in stream volume. Uh, so when there is static rejuvenation, then that will result to a change in the normal cycle because obviously when the, uh, there is an increase, there is a difference in the runoff. 
what are the evidences of rejuvenation or inter, uh, interruptions i have already told you what a dick point is now i'll tell you what is an incised meander before going to this now you see this is a meandering river this is a meandering river so but with the passage of time what happens you can see over here there are certain lines i hope you people can see that there are lines so these lines represent that the river was once flowing along this this height then it went to this height then it went to this height then it came down to this height why does this happen see it is a passage of time the mountains or the plateaus they may rise or there can be a fall in the sea level like i had said before in both the cases this meandering river this meandering river there will be an interruption in its course in its general course that means the river over here which was meandering almost in its third stage or second stage where there was more vertical erosion because of this vertical erosion you are seeing this wide valley because uh, there was vertical erosion now because of a sudden change in the in the land uh, in the land height suddenly what happens it will start vertical erosion so when the lateral erosion river when it was having lateral erosion or in its uh, youth in its old stage or maturity stage we know vertical erosion is a feature of youthful stage but this river this particular stream this meandering stream because of increase in the height or because of reduction of the sea level instead of vertical instead of lateral erosion it will start downgrading it will start vertical erosion and that will result that is called an incised meander when the same river instead of what uh, lateral erosion it will start vertical erosion in the same river valley and that results into these uh, these as evidences that that river has undergone active vertical erosion these are the evidences it has left its imprint one of the basic fundamental concepts of geomorphology this particular river has left its imprint on the landform so let us understand this one so this was the old curve this b was the old sea level now the sea level there has been a reduction sea level has fallen to the d so first it was here and now to d it has fallen so this particular area there is a change of height so this change of height is not due to hard rock uh, barrier this is because of fall in the river so the river now will move from while it is moving from here it will jump to this place so this nick point this is the nick point so nick points are topographic evidences of rejuvenation in the uh, cycle in the metropolitan cycle so the uh, interruptions in the cycle as i have said uplift of land lowering of sea level water stream flow now once that happens stream valley it takes on the youthful characteristics but at the same time it will re retain the features of old stages as well this can happen in, at, at any point in the cycle and when that happens that will lead to polycyclic or multicyclic landscape this again leads us to another fundamental concept of geomorphology uh, about polycyclic and multicyclic concept for that you can go through the uh, presentation on fundamental concepts of geomorphology these are the positive and the negative aspects of davis's model in general you can say that his uh, model was very simple and it can be highly applicable and his model was based on detailed and careful field observations and his model came after a long gap after hutton cycling nature the earth history and in his model he had integrated various other uh, concepts the concept of base level the genetic classification of river valleys the concept of braided streams by g k gilbert so these are the various positive aspects now what are the negative aspects first of all he if you can remember his six basic assumptions that is rapid uplift now uplift cannot be rapid that kind of up uplift we generally have not seen such kind of rapid uplift then he says the slow period of erosion can be disrupted by dynamic endogenesis and climate changes now there has been quite a few negative 
uh, there has been quite criticism regarding this also. He has divided uplift and denudation in two separate episodes, saying that if you remember that during uplift there is no erosion. Now, like that, it does not happen. Generally, if you see in the landform, in the landscape, these two uplift and erosion goes hand in hand. It does not happen that erosion will keep quiet till uplift has already occurred. Similarly, the uh, assumption that long stability of landmass, that is also not possible. Generally, a landmass does not stay stable for such a long uh, period of a time. Also, the assumption that the lithology or the rock structure to be homogeneous, that also does not generally happen. Generally, if you see around, then the rock structure over a large place of a land or the lithology, generally we have heterogeneous landform. So, these, this was all about Davis's cycle of erosion. If there is any query, you may type it down. Thank you.